Hi, I'm Dr. Douglas Casa, Chief Executive Officer at the Corey Stringer Institute and Professor of Kinesiology at the University of Connecticut. The mission of the Corey Stringer Institute is to provide research, education, advocacy, and consultation to maximize performance, optimize safety, and prevent sudden death for the athlete, warfighter, and laborer. KSI was founded in 2010 after NFL lineman Corey Stringer died from complications brought on by exertional heat stroke that occurred during football practice. According to the National Center for Catastrophic Sports Injury Research, exertional heat stroke is one of the three leading causes of death for high school athletes. This is extremely tragic when you consider that much can be done to prevent the condition from happening in the first place, and also much can be done to treat it appropriately if it does occur. Exertional heat stroke is 100% survivable if treated promptly with cold water immersion. Always remember the mantra, cool first and transport second. This video has been created to inform you on how to respond if a heat emergency occurs while practicing or playing any sport. First, please pay close attention to the following message from a parent who has endured the tragedy of losing a son due to exertional heat stroke. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome. My name is Lori Giordano. On June 29, 2017, my 16-year-old son, Zach, collapsed following morning football conditioning workouts. It was a hot Florida morning with a temperature in the high 80s. When Zach collapsed, because no certified athletic trainers were available, he was initially treated by the football coaches and his teammates with cool towels and water. EMS finally was called and he was transported by ambulance to the hospital where they estimated his core body temperature had skyrocketed to 107 degrees. Suffering from severe organ failure, he passed away on July 10th, 2017 from exertional heat stroke. Heat stroke is 100% preventable. If the basic heat illness procedures you were about to learn were implemented last summer, Zach would possibly be alive today. Please listen and follow the guidelines carefully so we can prevent future heat illness tragedies. Thank you. Hello, I'm Mike Ryan, certified athletic trainer and physical therapist with over 25 years of NFL experience. We live in a hot environment and push our bodies to extremes. Exertional heat stroke is caused when the temperature in our abdomen becomes too high without the ability to cool itself. When this happens, our vital body organs such as our liver, spleen, kidney, and even our hearts become overheated and they start to fail. Needless to say, the athlete is now fighting for their life. To properly prevent heat stroke, three critical life-saving steps need to take place. One, recognize a possible heat stroke is occurring. Number two, reduce their heat source, such as sunshine, activity, environment, equipment, and clothing. And number three, cool with cold water immersion. In the event of an exertional heat stroke, cold water immersion is the gold standard treatment. Remember, cool first, transport second. The purpose of this video isn't to help anyone diagnose exertional heat stroke. Instead, the information I'm about to share with you is to help you and your staff to properly recognize the signs and symptoms of heat illness and to respond accordingly. Before your practice or event, prepare for ice water immersion at the field or in a temporary medical tent. Fill the tub with two-thirds water and have three to four coolers of ice available before an emergency. If there is an emergency, pour one cooler at a time into the tub and measure the water temperature with a simple pool thermometer. Keep the water under 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Stir continuously. I should cover the surface of the water at all times. Also post these instructions by the tub or ice machine as a reminder in case of an exertional heat stroke. During a heat related situation, it's not unusual to find the athlete showing signs of heat illness. Those symptoms may include any of the following. Vomiting, cramping, confusion, irritability, disoriented or irritated behavior, and even unconsciousness. Once exertional heat stroke is suspected, immediately prepare to cool the athlete. Initiate your emergency action plan by contacting emergency medical services.
Guys, I need some help over here. While waiting for emergency medical services to arrive, begin ice water immersion. It's the most aggressive cooling method you can use. Guys, we need help with the shade. Let's get some ice, guys. First, place the athlete in an ice water immersion tub. Coaches, volunteers, and even teammates may assist with a smooth and safe entry and exit. Hold his butt in, hold his shoulders up. Get his, get his, get his feet his in, knees. bend his knees. Bend his knees and get his feet in. There we go. There we go. Continually cover as much of the body as possible with ice water while cooling. If full body coverage is not possible due to a container size, cover the torso as much as possible. Always keep the athlete's head and neck above the water. Using a sheet or large towel under the armpits and across the chest is a simple and effective way to do this. Place a wet towel over the head and neck while the body is being cooled in the tub. Keep the water temperature under 60 degrees Fahrenheit. If possible, monitor vital signs at regular intervals. Teamwork is an important part of this emergency plan. Having assistance, be it medical staff members, coaches, parents, or players available is a must. They can help if the athlete becomes combatant or starts to vomit. Cool the athlete for a minimum of 10 to 15 minutes before transporting them to a medical facility. Here's a general rule of thumb. For every three minutes an athlete is in the cold tub, the core temperature will go down one degree Fahrenheit. For example, if someone is in the tub for 15 minutes, their body core will decrease by approximately five degrees. That's the power of cold water immersion, and that's why this technique is so effective in saving lives. Remember, cool an athlete's vital organs is the primary goal before transporting the player. Always remember this quote, cool first, transport second. After emergency medical services arrive, they will assess and determine when to safely remove the athlete from the tub and transfer to the nearest medical facility. If cold water immersion is not available, then cool the athlete with the best available means. An inexpensive and practical solution is called the taco method. To do so, utilize a tarp, approximately eight feet by eight feet or larger, to place the athlete on. Next, leave the athlete on the ground and lift all four corners and sides. Then pour ice and water into the taco shell to cool the heated athlete. Thank you for watching this video. We hope that through this training, you'll be prepared to take action should an event like this ever arise.